Welcome to Business Class. I'm Steve Ekstrom from Learn Tourism, a nonprofit academy dedicated to advancing the tourism industry through innovative training and sustainable practices. Our mission? To empower travel professionals and communities with the knowledge they need to create meaningful, authentic, and sustainable tourism experiences. Ready to join us on this journey? Visit learntourism.org and start making a difference today. Hello, everyone. Great to be with you, Stephen. My name is Tico. I am the proud owner and founder of Tourism Tactics by Tico. This year marks my eighth year. July made eight years. My background is working with DMOs. Started in my hometown of Lake Charles in 1996 and then moved to New Orleans and worked for that DMO on the tourism leisure side for many years. I like to tell folks I have a boutique travel consultant company that comes in and any kind of project that a DMO needs, I can do because of my last, this, this year marked my 29th year in tourism, I believe, 28th or 29th. Who, who cares when it's packed 20, right? Um, exactly. But, yeah. But as I long have, as we don't have, look like it. I have a, a passion and love for all things tourism, travel, and hospitality. And I was telling someone the other day, it doesn't seem like it's been almost 30 years because we get paid to promote fun experiences and life-altering itineraries because that's what travel does for people. Travel allows you to reset in mind, body, and spirit. So that's why I always tell people that if I can encourage them to get in this industry, I always do. Yes. So that's a little bit about Tourism Tactics by Tico in a nutshell. So Tika, tell me about the moment when you realized this was the industry for you. Speaking of life altering, when I realized this was the industry for me, because when I first started, I didn't even know my hometown had a tourism office. I didn't know anything about tourism. I was in banking and during school, I just worked my way up at this particular bank. I had great rapport with the customers. The president of the company liked me. He liked my interaction with the customers. They started promoting me. They were opening up a new branch in, in my hometown, this north of Lake Charles, a little community called Moss Bluff. I was training to be a junior loan officer, and I was going to be responsible for counting the, the vault each day. At the time, that's when we still balanced our checkbook. I didn't even like to do that, but it was just a great company. I love the people, but I hated the work. One evening I was flipping the newspapers. That's when they still had job opportunities and won't ads in the newspapers. I saw this, this job, something about travel and meeting people. And so I was like, why not? I called and inquired about it. Didn't really know anything about it, but it just happened. And I didn't know this till a few weeks into the process. It just so happened that um, one of my great customers would wait in my line where I had two people in my line and my, the other tellers would have no one and she still would wait for me. And that was okay with the other tellers. She happened to be on the board of the tourism office at the time. And again, we didn't make this connection until I was well into the process of the interviewing um, steps. And so that's how it all happened. When I first started, I didn't know a thing. It's so funny because now one of the things I do with tourism taxes is I train people and train new employees, but I didn't get that training. When I started in Lake Charles, it, I was just kind of thrown in. Matter of fact, I started on a Monday and that Friday I was on the plane to um, Cincinnati, Ohio for NTA spring. And that's when NTA still did the spring conferences. And I was there for a week, not knowing what I was doing, who I was talking to, what I was talking about. They just said, here. And to think about doing that now to some of my clients would be a nightmare. But that's just the way we did it. When I first moved to New Orleans, it was kind of the same thing. It was like, let's go, let's go, let's go. I didn't really have a lot of training per se. You just got to make it work. That was in March of 1996. And that's how it all began. I was barely born then, Tico. I know. <laughs> I know. They <laughs> made the only exception ever to hire a 12 year old. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. uh, one of the things that I think has made you successful, and this comes from a place of observation, is that people just like to spend time with you. Oh, that's and, very and nice. And people enjoy your company. And in 
sharing your company, you are also sharing your knowledge and your insight. How would you like people to describe you? That is a very amazing compliment. And I never take it for granted because I've learned to embrace it because my gift is people. I'm never the smartest person in the room. I don't claim to be. It's not my jam. I lead with common sense, of course. But, you know, I've learned over the years to listen to people, really listen to them. And when I'm talking to them, talk to them. I can be in the room with the CEO of a company and then also someone on the, the ground level of that same company and we'll treat them the same. I just find the joy in people and the connections. One of the things that I love to do is I love to connect people to make uh, either party stronger in what they do. So if I can introduce you to this person to elevate you in this project, that's what I love to do. And I've been quite successful with those connections. And again, it's one of those things that I never take for granted. Uh, you know, I have one brother who's a singer and is uber talented. I have another brother who's an expert welder. So everybody has their gifts, but my gift is really people and understanding what they need. I always say anyone can do what we do, but not everybody can be successful because to understand your own product and before you're selling, because one of the first things I do when I train people, Stephen, is I always say, you know what? You are selling yourself first. And I'll tell them the stories. Sometimes I'll go to a trade show, especially if it's a new trade show and I'm getting to know people. It will be sometimes a year or two, meaning that you see them one time, the another time you see them. It may be one or two meetings before we go into what I'm selling. Because the first thing you're selling when you walk up to that table, you walk up to that booth, you're selling yourself because in our industry, people love to do business with people they know and trust. And that is the key to my success. I'm also service oriented. And that's another huge key. I'm not only proactive, I'm extremely reactive. So when someone is calling you and asking you for something in your city or your destination, it's one of those things that you get it for them. It doesn't matter if you have a book group with them or not, because I look at it at everything we do. If it's not overnight today or tomorrow or even next year, it will be in three years down the line because they're going to eventually say, you know what? He is so good to work with, or they are so good to work with. We're going to give them a series. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's also about reputations. And as much as it is, building your own reputation, it's your ability to advance the reputations of those around you. Yeah, absolutely. And I believe that strongly. I love building other people up. That's it's not always the case in our industry or every industry, but for the most part, that's the, the thing that I enjoy about our specific in industry is that we're champions for each other. Here in Louisiana, I always say, that all the DMOs in our state are competitors, yes, but everybody's friendly competitors. They'd rather see the business in Louisiana than lose it to Mississippi or Texas and so forth. That's key. Building each other up is true harmony and community within our uh, organization. What piece of advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, my goodness. The best piece of advice is don't worry so much. I've learned, even as I get older, that everything always works out. It may not work perfectly, but everything always works out. Give me an Go example ahead. of when everything's worked out for you. Maybe as it relates to breaking out onto your own and, and doing your own thing. That was nerve wracking. And it was just one of those things that I think it was a personal, it was a personal journey because I knew that I loved what, what I was doing in New Orleans. At the time, I was director of tourism. I you know, had been doing this for many years, traveling like crazy. And for New Orleans & Co., one of the things that I did for them is I oversaw my markets. My markets were Europe and China. I was always in those countries. At one point, I was like, okay, enough is enough in terms of the major travel. I went ahead and resigned without really having a plan. <laughs> 
I really didn't have a plan in place when I resigned. I just knew that I had to make a change. When I decided to go out on my own, I didn't have any capital. It was just me, an individual, trying to make a living. One of the things that I did is I reached out to three uh, people that I knew. I reached out to visit the North Shore, visit Lake Charles, and Hospitality Enterprises out of New Orleans. And I was like, if y'all can do this monthly, I can, you know, rep y'all and then, but work for myself. It didn't happen overnight. It was kind of back and forth negotiating. It finally all worked out, but it was so much stress, so much anxiety that it's one of those things. If you had a crystal ball, you could have saved my gray hair moment or me losing additional hair on top of my head that I don't have. So that was one of the major things. But, you know, I find that it's even just in life, everything always works out. If it's personal, if you're going through something with your family, again, it always doesn't work out the way you intended, but it will always work out. The stress that it causes is not needed. I would go back to my younger self and just go with the flow. And I'm go with the flow type of person. But when it comes to life decisions and projects, I like to stay on task. It, if something is not met at a certain time, you tend to get a little, ah, but you got to say, you know what? It's not happening here. Let's bump it up two days or bump it back three days. There's always room for a wiggle because life is so short. And that resonates with me more now than ever because just in the last three weeks, I've lost four people that were very dear to me various ages, various reasons. It just emphasizes worry less, live more. I like affirmations and just reminders and just daily devotion is worry less, live more. And then when that really sinks in, that that is great advice for anybody in any situation. I just happen to like tattoos and I like reminders. So when I look down at my leg, and one of the, my last tattoos, it says, wear less and live more. Because when you're gone, what's important is your faith, family, friends, and of course your pets. We love our pets. And so that you know, that's a long way of saying advice to my younger self and, and just moving forward with life. And that's so important. And that's good advice for just anyone. Just again, my motto is worry less, live more. Where do you see yourself in five to 10 years? Before we dive back in, a quick word from our sponsor, Learn Tourism, the nonprofit academy, where we're dedicated to transforming the tourism industry with four key services. Our cutting-edge learning experience platform, which offers robust analytics and seamless updates. Our custom course development, which ensures tailored learning solutions. Subject matter experts, who provide deep insights and valuable knowledge. And of course, our engaging speakers, who are here to inspire and educate with impactful presentations. Discover how we can elevate your tourism education at learntourism.org. Oh, okay. Good question. And from Tell walking me. down the aisle in a beautiful gown. Yeah, of course. Of, of course. Vera Wang, of course. Um, yes. And I want it asymmetrical. Um, of course, I had, hadn't thought about it, but. <laughs> <laughs> no um, thought at all, but the flowers no, are, no, you know. Yeah. My colors are blush and bashful. See myself doing this. We're still working for myself in five years, but then I don't really see myself retiring. I really don't. As long as I'm healthy and because the work that we do is so enjoyable. Five years, I'm still working for myself, still my DMOs and various clients. I'm 55 now. Maybe when I'm 65 I, and I'm still healthy, I would love to be a cross-country tour escort. I, I love logistics. I love making sure. And again, that goes back to my service part of me. I'm very service oriented. I like to take care of people. I like to make sure people are having fun. I would be a great tour escort. So any company out there that's listening, call me in about uh, eight years and let's start working on it. <laughs> that would give me 
joy in my later years. Still working, but not killing myself, but still enjoying the career that has brought me so much joy. What's your earliest travel memory? Oh, earliest travel would have to be back and forth because my dad is Venezuelan. My mother is American. They met at LSU. And my mother was a waitress at the uh, Piccadilly cafeteria in downtown Baton Rouge on 3rd Street. My father was an engineering student at LSU. They met and got married. We traveled a lot back and forth from Venezuela to Louisiana. My mom had five, five boys. I'm the youngest of five. And she would always have us in all white suit, red shirts, and white ties. We all dressed up. And I can remember, that's when you could still smoke on the planes. And I can remember going back and forth from the States to Venezuela because I lived in Venezuela till I was four. And so that would probably be my earliest recollection of travel. I, I had international travel in me from the time I was born. <laughs> I was destined to be an international uh, traveler. Where is a place that you'd like to visit next? A return visit or just a visit? Just anywhere you'd like to go next. I would have to say Sweden, that whole side of the world. I just think it's so fascinating. And of course, while you're up there, visit the other countries that, because that would bring out my inner Viking. And then, and then I could start visiting some of Rose Nylon's people. Rose. <laughs> 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 learn how to put together flat pack furniture right 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 that's so funny that and this is going to sound so weird i love the serenity of a beach but i'm not a huge beach person in terms of yeah. i just i'm not one of those ones that can just sit on the beach all day in the sun i need to move but i like to visit i just i worked a conference last week in pensacola and just a few mornings getting up early and then walking the beach. That was serenity to me. And that felt really good. But yeah, I'm not one of those beach people that could just lay all day. And there's people out that love it and can be there like eight hours. That's just not me. I like to be mobile. Yeah. So I love the serenity of it though. Anywhere in Fiji, I'll take it. You mentioned your folks. Yes. How are you most like each of your parents? My dad, we had a weird relationship because I was so young when my mom left him and he was never in my life. I like to say I have no traits of him just because I didn't know him and he was never around. But my mom, I get my willpower. I get my work ethics from my mom. I will say this, all of my brothers, we did get our personality from our father because he was very outgoing and all my brothers are outgoing in their own style. We're all social, but in our various styles. My brother right above me is very social, but he's uh, a little more soft-spoken, but still very social. So I would say I did get that trait from my dad. And what, what's so funny is my dad had gorgeous green eyes and all of us boys, brown, just brown. So that's mm. genetics. That Louisiana genetics is strong. But imagine Tika with green eyes. My oh, goodness. Watch uh, out, world. I know. And it, they were almost like marbles. I mean, they were so gorgeous. But yeah, so none of us got those, but all just brown eyes. But yeah, I would say personality, dad, mom, worth ethics, her willpower, just her determination. Just she raised five boys by herself. She put herself through nursing school. She had to come back to the state. She says, I just got to make this work. I got five boys to feed yep. and, and they were, we we're all pretty close at age. I'm the youngest. I'm 55. And my oldest brother, he'll turn 65 next week, actually. Yeah. So for 10 years, I think she was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Pumping out babies along the way. <laughs> what did I not ask you that you wish I did? You're always such a good interviewer. You know what? Regret. My biggest regret in life. I don't really have a lot of regrets, believe it or not. I have some things that I wonder, I said, I wonder if I would have stuck that out a little longer. One of those is, full disclosure, is that I leave New Orleans and Co. too soon. But if I hadn't left them then, would I be where I am now? 
So it would just be in such a different lifestyle because what I do now, I'm able to really spend quality time with my customers. And it's a little more difficult to do that when you're in a fast paced DMO world. You could still do it, of course, because I did it. And a lot of people out there are doing it, but it's just a different relationship because most of my clients, 95% of my clients have been with me for multiple years and they when we finish one project, we just start another one. So I would say I have small bouts of regrets, but nothing substantial. But I say all that to say this, would I change anything now? No. I like the path I'm on. That, that is, I can say that. I like the path that I'm on for sure. What would you like to ask me? What is your biggest accomplishment in your tourism hospitality career? That's a really good question. My, my biggest accomplishment, I could say things like the numbers. I, yeah. I've influenced millions of travel experiences over the last 25 years or so that I've worked in this industry. And that's no exaggeration. And that is a tremendous accomplishment because travel and experiencing different places and meeting different people is a learning experience in and of itself. Right. Um, so to the extent that I've helped millions of people learn something new, experience something new, whether it's trying new foods or seeing a new show or going right. to a new museum or visiting a new city, that is a, a humbling accomplishment. But what I think is my greatest accomplishment now is my own personal journey Right. to a point where I recognize that I'm a nerd. I, I right. love to learn. Right. And it took me a while to, to pinpoint what that thing was. Right, right, yeah, yeah. That makes me tick. To recognize that I love to learn gives me the ability to share that passion with others in, in ways that I never would have imagined. Would I have imagined that there'd be 30,000 people enrolled in courses through a, a platform that I co-founded you know, right. just this year, just this year, 30,000 right. people? No, I never would have imagined. Would I imagine that the graduation video I gave for a course is now translated into 15 different languages and right. broadcast? I, I never would have imagined that stuff. But the accomplishment is that simple being able to do the right thing for the right reasons. Right. Yeah. And, and I think the same would hold true for anybody. Right. But you have to find out what that right thing is for you. And there was a really wonderful Holocaust survivor who said, when your abilities meet your interests, you find your calling. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And to have found that is an accomplishment. You're very good at it. We talked about my reputation earlier. It's really an accomplishment when you've been in an industry as long as you have and have that steady and that, that level of confidence with your clients and your like of because people just generally enjoy being around you. I know you said that about me, but I'm going to echo that and turn that right back to you. I'm excited to see where your travels takes you next. I hope you are journaling your RV experiences because... It would be an interesting read. Oh, it is an interesting life. Yes, indeed. Believe me, you know, that is, there's no shortage of adventure. Right. And, right. and I think that's the other thing I've learned is that I embrace every day and everything that happens as just a part of the adventure. Some people would get downtrodden. Oh, this didn't work out that way. Or I broke apart or whatever. Oh, it's just part of the adventure. Right. Oh, absolutely. And I think when you can do that and you can brush it off your shoulder. Right. You Where live a lighter less? life. Worry less, live more. You have no control of what is meant to be. And I may wake up tomorrow and be worried about something else. I'm not saying you don't forget your life lessons, but a lot of times you need reminders. That's right. And yeah. you know what, Tico? I have faith in you that your handbag will always match your umbrella. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. It is always such a pleasure to visit you. with you. It really is. If folks want to get in touch with you, how would they do that? You could several ways. Of course, on social media at Tico Soto, T-I-C-O-S-O-T-O. -O. My website is tourismtactics.com. And there's a link on there that you can just click and it goes right to me. I have social media for Tourism Tactics by Tico. And of course, my personal is Tico Soto. There's not that many of them, but there's more than you think. 
And you can always reach me on, on my cell at 504-202-0837. That is my primary work phone as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tico, for joining me here in business class. I appreciate you. I appreciate our friendship. And I look forward to catching up with you next time. Likewise, my friend. I in, have enjoyed our friendship for many years. Thanks for tuning in to Business Class. This episode was brought to you by Learn Tourism, a nonprofit academy where we advance the tourism industry with cutting-edge training and sustainable practices. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to visit learntourism.org to learn more about our programs and how you can get involved. Until next time, stay curious, continue learning, and making a difference through tourism.